Hello everybody, this is Kermfield the Cat, and welcome to your fifth Lua 5.2 tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over the basics of tables. And in Lua, what a table is, is it's the only kind of container object in Lua. So, the tables in Lua take the place of arrays, vectors, lists, dictionaries, or any other kind of container object you can think of in other programming languages. And if you're not familiar with other programming languages, then it's kind of a mix of a set and a matrix in math. And if you're not familiar with those either, it's a variable that stores another variable. So this will be easier to see with an example. So we can say t as our variable name. You can use any valid variable name for a table. And then to declare the table, if you want it to be empty, you just give it opening and closing curly brackets. So our variable t is now a table type. And if we don't want it to be empty, we can put values in the table. So you just give it values separated by commas. So you can say 1, and then hello, and true. So we have a number, a string, and a boolean. So you can store multiple different kinds of types in a table. So you're not restricted to one table only being able to store one type. That's another huge advantage of tables. And We'll get to more of why that's an advantage in either later in this tutorial or our advanced tables tutorial. So we now have values in our table, and if we want to access them, we'll print them out to the console. To access them, you just write the name of the table, and then in square brackets, you write the index that you want to access. So this would be the first index in our table, this would be the second, and this would be the third. Now, most programming languages have container objects start at zero, so this would be index zero, this would be index one, and this would be index two. But for whatever reason, Lua does this differently, they start their counting at one. So again, this is one, two, and three. So if we want to access our value one, then we say t at position one. And the square brackets mean at position, so this comes out to saying t at position one. And if we run this, we get the value 1 in the console. And if we were to say t at position 2, we get hello. And t at position 3 gives us true. So that's one way to access values in tables. Uh, there's another way, but it's of no use to us now. We actually can't use it yet, so we'll get to that later in the tutorial. But this, this way suits our purposes for now. So this table has what are called numeric keys, and the keys in the table are what you use to access the values. So our value, our value hello has the key 2, because you give the square brackets 2 to access the value hello. And you can also give a table name keys, so we say first equals 1, and you can use any valid variable name for these. Second is hello, and third, oops, third equals true. So now if we run this, we get nil for t at position 2. And that's another thing with tables. You don't get an error if you try to access a position in a table that doesn't exist. You get nil. So you don't have to worry about running into errors. You'll just get nil if you uh, try to access a... If you try to give the table a key that doesn't exist, it will give you nil. So now if we want to access the keys that do exist, or the values that do exist, we can say first and give it as a string and we get one second becomes hello and third is true so now this table has named keys to access the value so you can no longer just access our values in the table with one two and three you have to give it the named keys and if you want a slightly cleaner syntax for calling named keys, you can say t dot, oops, dot first, so you don't have to give the key as a string. And this will give us one. t dot second is hello. And t dot third is true. So notice that this is kind of like accessing a property in a class, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming languages. Uh, this is because you can also use tables to make classes, and we'll get to that in a different tutorial. So, a table can also have both named and numeric keys, so we can just say 13, 14, just some random numbers. 
So now you can say t.third and then a comma to print multiple values on one line. Not sure if I've gone over that before. And then we can say t at position 1 will give us true and then 13 because this is the first numeric key in the table. So, so if we gave it position 2, we'd get 14. So you can have any combination of named and numeric keys. So the next thing we're going to go over is the size of operator. So what the size of operator does, we mentioned it in the logic statements tutorial, but we never went over it in depth because it wasn't of much use to us at that point. So what the size of operator does is it gets the size of a table. So if we were to say t equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so we'll also just have 10. So we have a table that counts up from 1 to 10. It has all the integers from 1 to 10. So now if we were to print the size of table t, then we would get 9 because it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 values in it. And if we were to add an 11th value, or a 10th value, it would give us 10, give us 11 if we added an 11th value, and we could also take away values. So the size of operator just gives you the number of indices in a table. It can also give you the number of characters in a string, so we can say hello, and if we do this, it'll say 5 because hello has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 characters. So you can also use the size of operator on strings. And let's undo this, go back to our table. We can also use the size of operator in our for loop from the last tutorial. So if we were to say for i equals 1, it's i equals 1, not i equals 0, because remember tables start counting at 1. So for i equals 1, and we want the loop to stop when we reach the end of the table. So we'll say stop at... Uh, stop when i equals the size of t. So type end at the end. So now we'll just print t at position i. And if we run this, we get all the values in the table. So the for loop counts from the first value, or the first index, all the way to the last one. And if we were to say the size of t plus 1, because the size of t returns a number, obviously, since it's returning the amount of indices in the table, if we were to say the size of t plus 1, it would count up to 9 and then give us nil, because if you try to access a value in a table that doesn't exist, it gives you nil, just like if you try to access a variable that doesn't exist. So that's how the size of operator works. It's useful for obviously iterating through tables and a bunch of other purposes that we'll we'll see probably in the future. So that's all for this video. We'll have more tutorials on the more advanced aspects of tables. We'll have one on properly managing memory with tables. We'll have one on using tables as the equivalent of classes and structures and object-oriented programming. And then we'll have another on what are called meta tables, which don't worry about those yet. We'll get to those in the tutorial where we go over that. So. In the next video, we'll be going over functions, and then in the video after that, we'll be creating a small game with what we know so far, and then we'll get back into tables. So, see you in the next video.